Lankin's mother abandoned him in 1947, a couple of years after he was born. His mother, I heard she was Dominican. I always figured his father was white, maybe even not Italian. Not that it mattered. Back then, if you look black, you black. Same as today, I suppose. He stayed at the orphanage until 1958. Well, when did you meet Lincoln Click? 1966. I was running black ops out of Laos on behalf of the CIA. He was loaned out to me via joint CIA DOD task force. He was a quiet boy. Good boy. Two Purple Hearts, a Bronze Star, and the Distinguished Service Cross. He served his country with honor and distinction. After the city closed the orphanage, he fell in with Sammy Robinson. Sammy ran the black mob over in Delray Hollow. I can't say I approved, but often colored boys didn't have a lot of options back then. Boys like Lincoln, the ones who've been abandoned, they're always looking for a home. Always looking for a place to belong. I think he thought he'd find it in the army. Thing is, once that's lost, you can never get it back again. When he returned from the war, Lincoln ended back up over at Sammy's. Now Sammy owed the Italian mob a whole lot of money. And he needed Lincoln's help. It's a damn shame what happened. It breaks my heart. Still say this is the craziest goddamn thing I ever heard. Using real money to rob the feds. Well, hell, man, not like this is our cash. This all came from Skeletta. Besides, peanuts compared to what we're gonna haul out of there. Is everything we need to burn? Yeah, that's it. I grabbed the keys to the truck, then we can get the fuck out of here. He's in the other room. Grab him so we can get the hell out of here. Hey man, grab those keys. Still not sure about leaving him like this. Damn. <laughs> 
We should get going. You got the keys so you can drive. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. Take it easy here in the town. We don't need the cops crawling up our asses. My old man wanted us to keep one of the guards alive, help throw the feds off the trail. Like you said, I take a chance. Besides, if I learn anything from being over in Nam, someone's willing to flip sides once, they're probably willing to do it a second time. And fuck you in the process. So answer me this, what's the craziest thing you saw over there? You don't want to know. Hell man, I'm a taxpayer, I got the right to know how my money's being spent. Oh, Georgie Marcano pays taxes. Damn right I do, that's how they got Al Capone, and I ain't going to prison for no fucking tax bill, huh? So come on, you gonna answer the question or what? We, uh... We on the coast of Quang Nai, evacuating the civvies before Charlie overran everything. Anyway, we get him onto a medical ship, and this woman walks up. She's got a baby in one hand, and the leash to a pig in the other. She starts up the ramp, and the MP stops her and tells her, you can only bring one thing on board. So she tosses the baby into the water. MP goes ape, tells someone dive in after the kid, starts screaming at the woman, wants to know what the fuck she's thinking. You know what she says to him? She says, I can always have another baby. Jesus fucking Christ. Hey man, you asked. <laughs> yeah, but I thought you were going to tell me a story about some gook getting his dick blown off or something. I mean, God damn. It's not a fault. But not like you think. The conditions over there, man. Jesus Christ. One day you're raising cattle, tending your rice. Next day everything bombed flat. You put people up against the wall, they will do anything to survive. That better have been one delicious fucking pig.
ones at the reserve probably won't be too keen on you waltzing around with that piece of yours. I'll just leave it under the seat. to see if these forged IDs are worth a fuck. Back it up to the loading dock. Some of these fellas might get a little uh, rough with the language and... Well, I ain't like I've never been called nigger before. Nah, I know, but I'm just saying, if I go along with it, ain't nothing personal. The only thing I care about is getting our hands on that money. Being hot, that's when we make our move. All right. Now, right, here we go. Put your IDs up to the glass. We're part of the Boeing crew. The fuck's this shit heel doing here? <sighs> Affirmative action. You know how it is. You can follow me. As for you, go on and grab those bags off the truck. You'll be carrying them to the burn room. How much y'all bring in? $238,546. Small bills, mostly. I'll have Miss Gale call up to your office when we're done. She'll confirm the delivery. Appreciate it. How you doing? You need to check that scatter gun. You packing anything? Still in training. Good. One less goddamn thing for me to worry about. You can pick it up on the way out. Buying room's down in the cellar. This way. I ain't seen y'all around these parts before. Y'all's over in Georgia for a while. He just got out the service. And my cousin's been trying to get on here for over a year now. Government tells him thanks, but no thanks. That's a crock of shit if I ever heard one. 
sad day when a God-fearing white man can't get a job, but ain't your nigga who staggers in his hide on the spot. You bastards better not be playing with each other back there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! Christ, look at that. Didn't know y'all held that much gold. Uh, Washington's been shuffling around on account of the war. He's here, and he gets sent to Dallas, and he comes back. Uh, it doesn't make a lick of goddamn sense. Here we are. those bags on the table there. Never done this detail before. Figured it'd be bigger. It gets the job done. Only time there's a problem is when the flu clogs up. Fuck, that's some heat right there. We used to use coal for it, but a year or so back we switched over to oil. Maintains a more consistent flame. Here's some guy come around the house trying to switch me over to oil. Told him I wasn't interested. I never was neither till I saw this. At least with oil, we don't get soot all over the goddamn place. Used to be we'd have a nigga come in with a hose, wash all the shit off the walls. Danny and Ellis should be coming up any time now. Uh, give me a second. <clears throat> right, you take care of those guards. And keep your ass down. You don't want them getting a drop on us. I know what the fuck I'm doing.
You know that house we've been renting out? Called over there last night. Told them I wanted to sell it. Told them they needed to be out in two weeks. And the man, his name's uh, John, starts laying into me, saying the lease gives them the right to a 30-day notice. That's how he's supposed to find a new place in two weeks. So I tell him none of that's my goddamn problem. It's my property, and I'll do with it what I please. If he brings up that fucking lease again, I'll use it to find my ass and make it mean. Not only that, I know he's friends with a couple of niggas, and they go over there at night and play cards. Told John when they moved in that I wouldn't tolerate niggas on my property. Neighbors see that, they start questioning me, wanting to know the kind of people I associate with. Let the niggas play cards with other niggas, I say. Fucking assholes. Taking cover! Called over there last night, told them I wanted to sell it, told them they needed to be out in two weeks. And the man, his name's uh, John, starts laying into me, saying the lease gives them the right to a 30 day notice. That's how he's supposed to find a new place in two weeks. So I tell him none of that's my goddamn problem. It's my property, and I'll do with it what I please. And if it brings up that fucking lease again, I'll use it to wipe my ass and make him eat it. Not only that, I know he's friends with a couple of niggas. And they go over there at night and play cards. Told John when they moved in that I wouldn't tolerate niggas on my property. Neighbors see that, they start questioning me, wanting to know the kind of people I associate with. Let the niggas play cards with other niggas, I say. Fucking assholes. Sorry, it just gets my blood boiling. last night, told them I wanted to sell it, told them they needed to be out in two weeks, and the man, his name's uh, John, starts laying into me, saying the lease gives them the right to a 30-day notice, that's how he's supposed to find a new place in two weeks, so I tell him none of that's my goddamn problem, it's my property, and I'll do with it what I please, and if it brings up that fucking lease again, I'll use it to wipe my ass and make him eat it, not only that, I know he's friends with a couple of niggas, and they go over there at night and play cards. Told John when they moved in that I wouldn't tolerate niggas on my property. Neighbors see that, they start questioning me, wanting to know the kind of people I associate with. Let the niggas play cards with other niggas, I say. Fucking assholes. Sorry, it just gets my blood boiling. Get over here, man. Thank you. 
Be trapped. He's got me stuck. me stuck I'm out
over here. Hope there's some left for me. This sorry fuck is mine. <coughs> Let's get those cops oh, Shit. Fuck. No one taking me out yet, son. The only way we walk out of here is if we get the weapons stored in that armory. Bust the door open. I'll watch our asses. God damn it, why won't this open? Give me that damn thing. Face way worse than this over in Nam. Little smoke don't be shit. Stay close to the vault, watch for the drill. I'll deal with these assholes. There he is. Well, Sammy had men all over the place. Now, one of them worked at a cleaner's and stole the uniforms Georgie Marcano and Lincoln Clay wore on the day of the robbery. Another one was a janitor at the Federal Reserve, and he provided a rough layout. The robbery of the Federal Reserve was timed perfectly, and none of it would have been possible without the involvement of Sammy Robinson, Lincoln Clay, and the rest of the black mob. You just come from Vietnam? 
That's right. I was a Marine in the Pacific. You take it from me. Just because you're home doesn't mean you're back. You understand? People around here, they don't, they don't get it. Never will. <laughs> Keep your ass out of trouble. I'm late. Got caught up crossing the bridge. Don't worry about it. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for my stepbrother, Lincoln Clay. You seen him? He used to get ticked off if you were even a minute late. Kiss my ass. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> How was the trip? Being how this is the first time in four years and somebody telling me where to go, what to do or how to do it, it was fucking great. <laughs> Hmm. What's new with the old man? Man, don't even get me started on Pops. He used to pull his head out of his ass. Same as ever then. Brother, you have no fucking idea. Damn, Ellis. She's looking good. <laughs> Just like I left her. Man, even I know not to fuck around with your cop. Hmm. All right, come on. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> Sammy's doing all right. Ever since we got your telegram about coming home, he's been climbing the walls. What if the plane crashes? What if the train's delayed? What if they call him back? And he goes stand in front of the kitchen window and sip his whiskey like he was expecting you to come strolling up the sidewalk. Don't say nothing about me telling you that. I won't. He'll be fine once he sees you. Ever since Mama Hell, you know how he gets. to Empire Bay a year or so after you shipped out. Started selling weed. They call and ask me if I want some. I say sure. It's free money as far as I'm concerned. Anyhow, a month back, Marty drops me a line and says they're moving into heroin that they're looking for a partner down around these parts. Can't imagine Sammy was too keen on that. I never told him about the weed. That ain't nothing to nobody. But this, I gotta talk to him about. I ain't said more than three words and he's yelling about the feds. How we don't need J. Edgar up our asses and what the fuck am I thinking? Selling dope with kids running around the neighborhood. We ain't selling no dope to no children. <laughs> like they got any money to begin with. <laughs> Fucking around the side. Heroin's was pretty serious shit. Knew a couple guys over in Nam who were running it. Wound up pissing off the wrong person. Got their throats cut. Shit, man, I know what's what. That's why I'm talking to Georgie about it. No way Sal's gonna go along with that. Georgie says he can keep his old man from fighting out. We'll still clear the high low in Frisco, just selling the French wall. Georgie's Uncle Lou won't say shit as long as we give him a taste of the action. I don't know, man. Georgie's a cool cat and all, but heroin ain't the kiddie pool. Come in on it with us. I bet he'd agree to a three-way split. <sighs> I don't know. I kind of need to lay low a bit, figure some things out. Yeah. All right.
once you get settled in, I was thinking we can go to this new club in the French Ward. Maybe double date it. Well, who the hell am I gonna go with? Your great Aunt Beatrice? Oh, God. <laughs> I ever tell you I accidentally saw her without a shirt once? Oof. That woman has the droopiest, nastiest tits I've ever seen. <laughs> they were like two sacks of potatoes with nothing in them. Yeah, like that was a fucking accident. Hey, man, fuck you. I was damn lucky to walk away from that one. Anyway, you'll go with Regine. Regine? Believe me, once you see her, you're gonna want to dig right in. <laughs> Matter of fact. She got half the guys in the hollow sniffing around asking her out. Turns them all down. She's only got eyes for you, Lincoln Clay. <laughs> fuck you. Wait and see, man. One look and your pecker's gonna pop right out. It's your car, bash it up all you want. saying going through the front. I ain't having your wall here or I ass use the back door. Boy, I send you to bring Link on Clay home. Not the big nigga who ate him. Well, shit, old man. I finally went somewhere they knew how to cook. <laughs> Welcome home, son. How are you? I'll be better once I get some of that shine in me. I always <laughs> did love corn whiskey. I would like to make a toast. My father used to say that the real worth of a man came from the mark he left on the world. When Lincoln first told me he was joining the military, I was against it. Too dangerous, I say. 
Let those people fight their own war, I say. But then I realize Lincoln needed to go out and make his mark. And that's precisely what he did. I am so, so proud of you. Paul Lincoln, bienvenue à la maison. Paul Lincoln, bienvenue à la maison. <laughs> you so good. <laughs> nice seeing you, Lincoln. Oh, I kept you in my prayers. I really appreciate that, Father. <laughs> now, who wants to get shit faced? <laughs> Woo! It's hard to explain what it's like coming home from war. Elation, fear. Imagine being trapped in a dark room and there's no way out. And every fear, every nightmare you ever had is in that room with you. And there's no escape from any of it. And then, one day, a door opens, and you're free to go, just like that. The thing is, you made your peace with your terror and your fear of death. And now part of you is afraid to leave it behind. But what choice do you have? Every soldier has to walk through that door one way or another. Man, that whiskey's going to in the morning. Hell, man, just sleep it off. The room's the same as you left it. I'm going to take the basement. <laughs> the basement? Why the fuck you want to crash down there? I'll see you in the morning. Man, that wall must have really fucked you up. 